When I first heard the rumour of Steven Gerrard to be our next manager, I, I dismissed it. Look, I've got to be honest, I'll make a video about anything, right? But I even thought that, I thought, no way, this is, it's preposterous, it's ridiculous. It, it never passed more than a, being a, a fleeting thought and then it was gone. There's always something more realistic to talk about. And then I saw the article surface again, I thought, oh, not this one again. And now there seems to be quite a few articles. I'd be less bothered if it was a sort of cut and paste job from the original article. But there seems to be a few sources. So I actually thought, you know what? Is there something in this? Now, I don't think there is, but now I do feel the need to say it out loud and just explain why I think this would be an absolutely terrible idea. But firstly, firstly, let's get this right. We have a manager in place at the moment. And as I mentioned a couple of days ago, I think there is every chance that David Moyes keeps his job beyond the next three games. If he loses the next three games, he's out of a job. I think if he gets one point out of the next three games, he's out of a job. However, after the break, uh, after sort of calming down a little bit, I think I needed a break from the Premier League. I didn't think it at the time, but I think I did now. After looking at the, the friendlies we've got lined up, after seeing some of the players hopefully returning back to training refreshed, I think he can get four points out of the next three games. If he does that, he keeps his job. And then anything other, any discussion about manager replacements is largely irrelevant. He'll keep his job. It's as simple as that. So I, I, I don't think this Steven Gerrard thing was, is, is going to come into play anyway. But let's just suppose for a minute that it does. Let's just imagine that he loses next three games, David Moyes gets sacked. There's no way that Steven Gerrard can be considered a viable option. There really isn't. He won a league title at Rangers. And from the outside looking in, that might not look like too bad a thing. They'd been in the doldrums, they had their bum smacked, and they got kicked out of the SPL for uh, whatever. They, they got kicked out of the SPL. Found their way back, eventually won the league title. However, he wasn't pulling up any trees when he did that. I think on that particular season, it was the weakest Celtic team in years. They almost didn't do it, and he was getting, well, he got battered in the cups by lesser teams, as or, or so I'm told. I, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of, of the SPL. But basically, he wasn't brilliant. So then he gets the Aston Villa job and he takes his assistant, Michael Beale, with him. Michael Beale is now the Rangers boss, by the way. Anyway, he takes Michael Beale with him. It quickly becomes uh, evident that Michael Beale is the tactical brain in all this. Uh, Steven Gerrard does the man management. Michael Beale's the, the tactical, the tactical one. When he came to Aston Villa, did really well. Really, really well. I think he got um, Jacob Ramsey playing well, didn't he? He brought Coutinho in on loan. They were firing. They were... They, they were looking pretty good. He was getting the best out of Matty Cash. And Aston Villa, don't forget, though, had just before Steven Gerrard came in, spent an awful lot of money. So he had good players there. The arse fell out of it when Michael Beale left to go to Queen's Park Rangers. Not Glasgow Rangers, Queen's Park Rangers. Then they just started losing all the time. They carried on, carried on, carried on. Uh, Gerrard got the sack. He basically lost the brains behind the operation, basically. Uh, Michael Beale was so coveted and so well thought after that Wolves tried to nick him from Queen's Park Rangers. He said, I'm not going anywhere. He's now gone to Rangers, from Queen's Park Rangers to Rangers, Glasgow Rangers. Anyway, doesn't matter. The point of the matter is, why is Steven Gerrard even being considered as a viable option? Do I believe the board think he's a realistic target? I suspect not, but I feel the need to say it out loud anyway. I really do. There are much better options than Steven Gerrard's. I just think it would be almost the worst thing we could do. And there was, there's no evidence to suggest that he could do anything with us. The only evidence you'd be looking at would be the evidence from Aston Villa. But by taking him on, you'd be ignoring that main component part, which was Michael Beale. It's like taking a car without the engine. You can't do it. You shouldn't be doing it, right? So anyway, that, I, I just looked and I thought, no, just make sure this does not happen. I, I'm, I'm surprised. Not any, I'm surprised journalists are even running with it. I'd be amazed, actually, if he gets offered any job at top-level football anytime soon. I think he might have to go down and do what, you know, what Wayne Rooney did at Derby or to go to the MLS or something like that. I think that may well be his path. He's ever going to make it back into management. But just because everybody else has come to their senses, you often worry about West Ham. Which leads you to a couple of other uh, people that have been suggested as targets for West Ham, and namely um, Sean Dyche and Thomas Frank. So let's just look at those uh, three individually. Um, 
I'm sorry, three. <laughs> sorry, we've done three already. I'm saying three because I've got an idea as well. Okay, Thomas Franks. The, the trouble is with this one is he has a whole system behind him. He has a coherent, well-oiled machine, which is Brentford, Brentford, their recruitment strategy, the structure of the club. All of those things are there to facilitate and help that manager. I've never subscribed to this idea that you can take a, take a manager from another club and just parachute him in to West Ham and he will succeed. I, and I said that with Graham Potter, who I think is a good manager, but you have to let him build. You have to put the infrastructure behind him. And that is not the case with Thomas Franks. Far from it. Sean Dyche is a different matter, though. Before I talk about him, this video is sponsored by the One Football app, which you can download by clicking the link below. All of these stories are on the One Football app, by the way. It's an app. It's free. It's a generic football app, Premier League football, world football, European football. The best thing is you can tailor it to deliver the news that only you want. So if only you want the World Cup and you want West Ham, that's all it will give you. Just want West Ham? Tell it. I just want West Ham news. And what it will do is it will go around the internet, take all the stories of all the websites, search the newspapers and put all the West Ham stories into one bundle, send you a notification and send it straight to your phone. If you're going to download it, if you don't like it, you can just undownload it, uninstall it, that's the word. Um, but please use the link underneath and I'll know you've come from Hammer's chat. Uh, Sean Dyche, different kettle of fish. Sean Dyche, I'm not advocating and saying I particularly want Sean Dyche, but Sean Dyche has shown that, I, just, I went a bit hard, Sean Dyche has shown. Um, it, it was hard to say, a bit of a tongue twister, that one. Uh, Sean Dyche has shown, <laughs> Sean Dyche has shown, there's no way, I can't, I can't unsay it now. He's demonstrated, Daishi has demonstrated, that he can actually do it without an infrastructure behind him. He can do the job when actually there's mayhem behind him, when he's not getting any support at all. He's shown he can do the job when players are getting sold from underneath him. They're two very, very different things. Would I realistically like West Ham to play in the style of Brentford? Well, it depends by what you mean. Um, the, the, the football is great. The time wasting, I'd rather bloody not. Thank you very much. Um, would I like us to play in the style of Sean Dyche? Uh, no, but he plays two up front. So you may well find that he comes in and things start to work. I think he's more of a viable option than Franks for the reasons that I've given. If what we were going to do is overhaul the coaching and overhaul everything, which I, I think we probably are going to do at some point, then maybe he's the guy. But as, as I've maintained on numerous occasions, I do not expect if David Moyes goes that Rob Newman stays. So the, the suggestion that there's this big infrastructure behind him, I, I think that crumbles as well. I think it's that Mark Noble is going to have to build from the bottom up if David Moyes does go. Uh, there's, there's two outstanding managerial candidates. We've spoken about Rangers. Um, I, I, I forget the guy's name. He's, he's, a, he's an Aussie. He's got a Greek name, I think, and he's at Rangers. Name escapes me, someone will type it. He looks to be really good. The, the football he's got them playing is superb. And not just that, you listen to any of the Celtic players who are interviewed, they have got only really good things to say about him. I like the way he comes across in the media, even if I've forgotten his name. And uh, basically the football they play is sumptuous. Let's put it that way. My personal favourite would be Vincent Company. I like the cut of his jib. I like the way Burnley play football. I like... That's no easy thing to turn around a team that has used to be playing in the style of Sean Dyche and then to turn it around to play in a totally different style so quickly ain't easy. But it's doable. That's why I don't ever fall for all this stuff about, oh, it takes a while for the players to integrate. If you're a good enough coach, you can get it done. And I love the way he carries himself. He is confident. He is He's confident. He's funny, he's charming, he, he deals with the press well, which leads me to believe he deals with the players well. He's very likeable, seems tactically switched on. He's got a really good name in, in the world game, as I was gonna say, European game. Everybody knows who he is. Uh, he's, well, he's, let's be fair, he's played under the best. He really has. He's played alongside the best and he's, and he's played under the best and he will have been able to take Loads and loads of tips from all the managers that he's played under. He served his apprenticeship, firstly at Anderlecht, and then he's done so at Burnley. That would be the guy I would go for. It has to be, I would go for him before any of the others to actually really build something at the club and, and give us something 
just going to get fans coming back to the stadium, first and foremost. Uh, anyway, just my thoughts on it. Sounds like I'm pimping out uh, David Moyes' job. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not. I, I think, as I say, I think he's probably quite safe in his job because I think he'll get the results. Lose an X3 and everything that I've just said becomes relevant. 